What are the most expensive and most rare Funko Pops out there? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the gas and gas. We're glad you're there, so you get the right time. We had an all time line. Uncle's hot toys and chimes don't mind. Stick around, like, comment, and be sure to subscribe because life's a little better when you answer Chris and Heather. Hey, that's a little better when you answer Chris and Heather. Hey, that's a little better when you answer Chris and Heather. And remember, if you tell it all, we are together. Yes. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 most rare and most expensive Funko Pops out on the market right now. You know, the Funko Pops that we can't f***ing afford. I mean, do you want to like spend that kind of money on Funko Pops or would you no, rather have a No, no, no. I mean, I'd rather have like a new car or something. I mean, it's a lot of money, right? Yeah. yeah. So, some of these you can buy a really nice car with. Yeah. You're driving like a potato sack at this point. At least I don't have a car payment. That's a very good point. Heather's car is from 1990 and she's it's still driving it. It's from 2004. No, she's still driving it. It's from 1990 and... 2004. Th there, it has a door. It has four doors. A door. Four. And sometimes a windshield. Depends on the day. It's never not had a windshield. Let's talk about all those great Funko Pops. We collected all of our data from Pop Price Guide, poppriceguide.com, or as some people like to call it, PPG. We looked up all the most rare and most valuable Funko Pops on the website, and we came up with the top 10. So the Funko app actually draws all its information from Pop Price Guide, but the Funko app isn't as reliable as Pop Price Guide for whatever reason. Apparently, the data doesn't transfer over properly. I don't know what's going on with it. If I'm looking for information in regards to value for my Funko Pop, I always go to PPG. I I actually talked to Christian Braun the other day who runs PPG and he mentioned a very new service that's coming to PPG and that's people making big sales and big purchases for Funko Pops out in the real world. A lot of these purchases and sales aren't actually tracked on PPG because people are doing all of this stuff behind the scenes. But now PPG is going to get involved when people are willing to allow them to be involved. That way PPG is more up to date. I really like this because when you're looking at these high dollar grails a lot of people sell like Chris said in person or to people that they know so they're not gonna throw it up on eBay or Macari and just let anyone have it there's risk involved with that you have shipping risks and on top of that some people scam others that's right and I feel like if I were selling something as high dollar as what we're about to talk about I want nothing to do with any of that I'd rather say here you go and hand it off to the person instead of of risk being scammed or risk something happening in transit. Absolutely. Doing it in person, handing over the money and handing over the Funko Pop or handing over two different Funko Pops for a trade is probably the best way to go, especially when it comes to high dollar sh like we're talking about in this video. Absolutely. So we're talking about 10 different Funko Pops or Funko Pop sets that are really high dollar and very rare. And we're gonna give you as much backstory to these Funko Pops as we possibly can. So we hope that quenches your Funko thirst. Does that sound good or? You just sound lame, but that's okay. But before we get started, hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell. That way you know anytime we go live or post new content. And we post new content every single day. Also, hit the like button because that gives us further reach on YouTube so we can find more Gasselcasters. Is that a good name? Gasselcaster? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Find new people to watch Gasselcast. Is that better? Or? It is scientifically proven that watching Gasselcast daily makes you happier. And it puts hair on your chest. Or it makes you cringe. Yeah, I, well, I cringe with every video that we make, Me so. Too. First up, we have the Willy Wonka and Oompa Loompa Golden Ticket 2-Pack. This is a 2-Pack with a Golden Willy Wonka and a Golden Oompa Loompa in it. Okay, so at Fun Days 2016, every single person who attended received a candy bar. And in four of those candy bars, there was a Golden Ticket. And each person who received the Golden Ticket got this 2-Pack. PPG believes that four were handed out at Fun Days and the other six were handed out to Funko employees. Employees. There's yeah. only 10 of these total. Yeah, and last we heard, Grail Monster, who most recently purchased the two-pack for $100,000. It was literally all over the internet for a while. In fact, we actually interviewed him, so make sure you go and watch. He was saying that he tracked down one, and he was actually tracking down a second one. Well, it turns out he actually got a second golden ticket. No sh 
Yeah, he didn't get a second pop set, but he got a second golden ticket. Wow. Yeah. On PPG, this is valued at $71,670. But we know the most recent sale was to Grail Monster for $100,000. And just to be clear, it was for the two-pack and the golden ticket. That's right. Because apparently the golden ticket makes it more valuable. Next up is the Clockwork Orange Alex DeLarge Glow Chase. Every single one of these were signed and hand numbered by Brian Mariotti and handed to six Funko collectors. Six. That's it. Those people are super lucky because this thing carries a huge value. As a matter of fact, it carries a value of $26,060 with the latest sale being in April on eBay for $32,439. Holy sh**. That's enough to buy you a new car! Next up, we have a Freddy Funko as Tony Stark Metallic that was handed out at SDCC 2012, and this thing is only 12 pieces. This is a grail to any Marvel collector. He looks incredible, and his value is $25,830. Holy crap, that's a lot of money. We have no information on how these were dispersed. We would assume fun days. I'm not certain on that, though. I believe it was fun days, but there was also a regular version of this handed out, and then this metallic version is like the more high-end variation. Very similar to the most recent box of fun that happened at home. Remember, they had like a regular variation of Carnage, and then they had a metallic variation variation of Carnage. This is sort of the same thing. Okay, so this next one is very interesting. It is a Stan Lee, and it's from StanLeeCollectibles.com. He signed them with a blue Sharpie, it looks like, and it's a chromed out silver Stan Lee. Yeah, it's a platinum. There are 10 of these. Yes, and there's a certificate of authenticity that comes with it. I don't see any sales more than 30 days old. Either all of the original collectors have theirs, with the exception of this one sale, or there have been private sales. Ah, okay. So the only recorded sale of this item is $18,000. It happened not too long ago on July 26th of this year. Wow. And it wasn't an eBay sale or a Macari sale. It was a team verified sale. So PPG was notified that the sale was going down. PPG is actually putting this whole system to use. Yeah. I'd be really interested in learning how they're doing this because with Grail Monster, he had to record the whole thing and send them video of like the entire transaction. So Christian actually explained to me that there's like an email scheme that goes in between all of this. Like maybe a screenshot of the PayPal and things like that. Got it, that makes sense. So number four on the list is Freddy Funko as Black Suit Batman. This piece came out at SCCC 2013 and it looks to be only 12 pieces just like the other one, the Tony Stark. The estimated value is $12,390, but what's interesting is the most recent sale was $17,500 and they went through eBay. For those who don't know, this is the early days of the Funko Pop. For many years, Funko was making wacky wobblers and other things of the sort. They got into Funko Pops and that's when things really ended up blasting off for them in the mainstream. Number five is a Freddy Funko as Count Chocula Glow Chase. So this was handed out in 2011 and there's only 10 pieces. Now another one that was handed out same year was just a regular Freddy Funko as Count Chocula and there was a metallic Freddy Funko as Count Chocula. I find this one very interesting because they labeled this a chase at 10 pieces, but they didn't label the Count Chocula metallic as a chase, but it looks like that one's also limited to 10 pieces as well. Interesting. Yeah, and that one carries a value of like 2,000 something, but there's no newer recorded sales, which is where PPG's new verification system comes into play. So I'd be interested in knowing what the true today's value would be. The last one of these sold in 2019 for $10,000 and that is its value on PPG. $10,000, wow. Which is a very interesting variant because it's just white. Yeah, he's just white and he glows. Yeah, kind of cool but weird. Next up is Freddie Funko as Jamie Lannister from 2013. This is another one that's only 12 pieces. Really? 
really interesting how they did a lot of 12 pieces. Yeah. I mean, these were definitely the early days of Pops. That seems like a really low number. So this Funko Pop is actually a bloody variant. Yes, there was a non-bloody Jamie Lannister Freddy Funko. This one is valued at $9,980. Next one on the list is another 12 piece, hand numbered and signed by Brian Mariotti of Funko. This is the regular Alex the Large from A Clockwork Orange. Apparently it was canceled or something. I don't know much of the history, but this Funko Pop was straight up just canceled. Yeah, so I don't know if they were looking to like make more of these. There was like a licensing sort of issue. I have no idea, but these were still handed out to collectors. I remember this Funko Pop being a big deal because Cletus Selden actually went to a con and bought it in person. And it was sort of a big deal at the time, maybe like five years ago, four years ago. The most recent sale of this was in August of 2019, which was about three years ago. Okay, so this is Cletus Selden, and because of the pandemic, my whole f***ing timeline is f***ed up, because I said like four or five years ago, but it's definitely not that long ago. So yes, this was Cletus Selden's purchase, and he purchased it for $11,000 from Fugitive Toys. That That's a big one. That's, that's huge. Yeah. Tommy Lee huge. We're not doing that anymore. That's old news. Is it? Yeah. Number nine is a very interesting one, and it definitely does not belong in the number nine spot. I would say that this is more of like three or two. This is the 24 count Freddy Funko as Venom. The last recorded sale was March of this year for $8,000, and it currently is sitting at $8,000 on PPG. However, there is one person in the Funko community who had many, many, many of these, and they basically cornered the market for these pops. I would say they had at least over half, if not three quarters of the Freddy Funko as Venoms. The last one I recall seeing was up for like 30 or $40,000. Yeah, they were way, way up there. Now I haven't seen proof of sales or anything, but I know that this person who had these did state that they were selling. When they started selling them, they started relatively low, like maybe 5,000, 10,000 or 12,000, something like that. But then each one that followed was like 15,000, 20,000, 25,000 because he was putting them into people's hands who wanted them and who were willing to pay those high he prices. He was able to control the market because yeah. of the amount that he owned. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. And watching him buy them, because we watched him buy them like over a course of time, and then watching him turn around and sell them for like a ridiculous amount was a whole other experience for us as collectors. Yeah, it was really, really interesting to see. So in my opinion, this definitely is more than an $8,000 pop. However, that March sale is really recent and I didn't yeah. even realize that that went down. That's weird. But honestly, I am pretty curious about what the most somebody has paid that person for one of these pops is. Yeah, unfortunately it wasn't controlled by PPG, so maybe we'll never know. Yeah. And number 10 is a metallic thing with black eyes, which apparently is an error. And this thing is valued at $7,950. This was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive in 2011. It says it's 480 pieces. So is the black eye version 480 pieces, or is there only a smaller amount that has the black eyes? Yeah, I don't know. All I know is what I'm reading on PPG. Okay, so it looks like it's supposed to be a blue-eyed variant, and the blue-eyed variant is $2,220, whereas the black-eyed variant is $7,950. I would be interested in knowing how many of the 480 have the black eyes. Yeah, me too. Also, how do you get that wrong? Like they had to paint those eyes. I know. So why'd they paint them black instead of blue? Maybe it was on purpose to get people in a frenzy because they have to collect all of them. That's a good point. But if that's the case, why would they limit to 480? Back then, this is when Funko was super, super small. This dropped True. in 2011. 2011. This is a kind of a big deal back then to drop 480 pieces like this. Things are much different today than they were back in 2011. So PBG is the perfect place to go to find out all the values for your Funko Pops. That's where I go and that's where we trust. If you're looking for accuracy, you totally need to go there over the Funko app. The Funko app does take the data from PPG, but as we mentioned earlier, it's not always accurate. No. 
Those are the top 10 most rare and most valuable Funko Pops of all time, at least for right now. We would love to know which one is your favorite of the lineup that we shared right here. But before we go, we actually have a package for Heather. And this package is from me and from a friend, and I figured that Heather would love to see what's inside. What is it? So this box is from our friend Nathan, and it was a team up between him and I to get you something really awesome. Are you ready? Why did you want to do this? Because we're teaming up. We're double teaming you, Heather. Enjoy it. <gasps> oh my gosh! And we also got you this. Oh my gosh! So if you don't know what these are, They're these U2s. are U2s. And they're Spongebob related U2s. And this is something Heather's been saying she's wanted for a long time. And there he is. I'm gonna head out. <laughs> and I have three dollars. <laughs> oh my god. The I'm gonna head out. It might be the best vinyl figure ever created. It's amazing. The back of this, it says, that looks like the toilet plunger I threw out yesterday. It's actually like the scene from Spongebob. <laughs> 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 That's so awesome. I absolutely love you twos. They're so clever and I love that they do like little memes and stuff. Oh my God, these things are amazing. Thank you so much, Nathan. I know that this is probably Nathan's doing because you're not very thoughtful. So should I even thank you? Well, he saw him in public and we decided to team up double double team in Don't order to get them. Break him. He is has this very like, fragile nose. Was this from the show? Did yeah. he actually say I'm a head out? No. Oh, he didn't. Okay, I didn't know. I don't know. I didn't watch SpongeBob. Don't judge me. I'm judging you. SpongeBob okay. is one of the greatest shows of all time. But he didn't say I'm a head out. Why would he say that? That's the I'm a head out meme. Yeah. Okay, so what is this? So somebody just said I'm a head out. They saw this and said I'm a head out. Yeah. I mean, that's what he's doing, right? He's like tired of your yeah. bullshit. Okay, so that's, that's what like it is. me right now. I'm a head out. These are seriously incredible. I'm leaving them out of box and I'm putting them on my desk because I love them. This one. I'm taking to work because I just want to leave all the time. And this one, I'm taking to work because I want to race. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, Do you enough. Think my boss will get yeah, the hint? I think so. Maybe so. I don't know. No, um, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm very grateful for my job. Heather will no longer have a job by Monday. <laughs> Guys, what do you think about these U2s and what do you think about all those Funko Pops that we talked about that are the most rare and the most valuable? We would love to know all that and more in the comment section down below. And also, do you use PPG? It's amazing. Go and check it out, poppriceguide.com, and go and create yourself an account right now if you haven't already. In every video, we like to shout out to some of our patrons from Patreon. In this video, we'd like to shout out to Sean Neal, Robert Offley, Craig Matthews, Mac the Ball, Celeste Crawford, Josh Swan, Shane Toner, Nikki Papada, Bobby Donut, and Frank Gast. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We appreciate all of our patrons. You guys rock. Head over to mysterygirl.com every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's when they drop their brand new Mystery Girl box. And you don't want to miss out on that. You get a Funko Pop, you get candy. You also get a scratch-off card that can reveal points for their website or a prize mysterygrail.com. For SCCC this year, they put out 5,000 Mystery Grail boxes. We have ordered some, a ton of our friends have ordered some. Make sure you stay tuned into this channel because once everybody gets their Mystery Grail boxes, we are going live with a ton of friends. It'll be the biggest Mystery Grail unboxing of all time ever, live. Hit that subscribe button and that little bell, that way you'll get notified. All right, it's that time again. Remember as always, we hunt together, yes. We'll catch you next time. Bye.